Hey guys, Phil here, hope you're all well. What you're looking at in front of you is the Dreamcast I installed the GDMU into in a previous video. I'll turn it on and you'll see it still works perfectly fine. Now that's not the normal boot, <laughs> that's because this Dreamcast uh, has had the Region 3 BIOS installed. But yeah, there you go, there's the GDMU menu. Um, now, what I want to do is, uh, I touched on this in the video where I installed the GDMU. Um, I want to explain why I prefer to install uh, a dummy load uh, across the 12 watt rail uh, instead of removing the power transistor. Um, so yeah, if you stick around, I'll crack on with that. Now, the problem with the Dreamcast is these power supplies are designed to work best under load. Now the problem is once you remove the, the GD-ROM um, the 12 volt rail doesn't like it uh, and the reason it doesn't like it is because that 12 volts is used to drive the spindle motor uh, which is the motor that spins the disc and the sled motor which is the motor that moves the optical pickup laser basically up and down uh, its rails to seek the disc uh, inside the GD-ROM. Um, so you remove that power draw uh, and the 12 volt uh, rail doesn't quite like that. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to point out the, the actual problem. Now the, the reason I've got this power supply out is this power transistor just here. Now the reason for that is the Dreamcast no lo longer uses its 12 volt rail um, and with it not being there these power supplies are designed to run under load they run best under load and when there's no load on the 12 volts um, it can actually uh, cause this power transistor just here to voltage spike uh, and this gets excessively hot uh, and it can fail uh, and then you lose your, your, your 12 volts uh, so if you ever want to revert back to the GD ROM, um, this has failed and then obviously your GD ROM is not going to work. Now to correct this problem, you've pretty much got two options. The first is to remove this power transistor. And yes, it is a power transistor. I'll come on to that later on. Um, and the second option um, is to do what I do, is create a dummy load. Uh, and put that across the 12 volt rail. Uh, now I'm going to show you the reason why I do it this way uh, and not remove uh, the actual power transistor. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to basically reverse this mod uh, and I'm going to show you what happens when you remove the power transistor uh, and why I don't do that. And as you can see, I've got the Dreamcast power supply out. Uh, now straight off the bat guys, I need to warn you, if you've never worked on a power supply before, and you're not comfortable working on a power supply, don't even bother. Get someone else to do it for you, because uh, you don't want to have an accident. Um, also, you need to be very careful with certain power supplies. Um, you can run into something called dielectric absorption, and um, that is where the capacitor, the main filter cap, uh, and some other capacitors as well, actually charge back up uh, when they're not even powered on. Um, so you can still get a, a good whack from one. Um, now most power supplies will have a bleed resistor across the uh, capacitor to bleed that uh, charge away, but you need to be very, very careful on some power supplies because they're not there. Uh, you just need to be aware of that dielectric absorption. What I want to actually do now uh, is remove this NPN transistor. This is an NPN power transistor. Uh, this is not uh, a voltage regulator. I just thought I'd, I'd tell you that. Uh, and I, in fact, I'll show you the schematic for this power supply later in the video. Uh, and we'll see that this is indeed uh, an NPN power transistor uh, and not a voltage regulator. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to desolder this. I'm going to turn it to the side and, uh, you know, screw it back on. Um, and then it won't be in circuit. Uh, also underneath, there's a little resistor I need to, to move out of the way as well. 
So I'll crack on with that uh, and then come back. That's the power transistor removed from the circuit. So it's obviously out of circuit now. Uh, what I want to do now is you see this little resistor just here. I want to remove that out of the circuit. Uh, and all I'm going to do is remove it and I'll solder it uh, onto the pad um, just so it's there. You know, I can always revert back. Um, it's not going to be in circuit. So yeah, I'll go ahead and do that uh, and then come back. And that's the mod to the power supply all complete. What you can see is I took the resistor and I just removed the resistor and I put it on one of its uh, pads. Uh, obviously, it's not connected to anything, so yeah, it's not gonna, it's not in circuit basically. Um, that allows me to revert back. I can just take it off there and solder it back to the two pads, and then it's back in circuit. If I turn this over, you can see what I've done to the power transistor. I've just connected it there and again to revert this I can always put it back in and get my 12 volts back but yeah that's the power supply all modded up now if we take a look at the Dreamcast power supply uh, this is for the Japanese version of the Dreamcast um, but it's not going to be far different from the PAL version um, obviously the transformer is going to be different because you've got different voltages but it's not going to be that far away um, but if we take a look at the connector just here uh, this is where all our voltage rails uh, are coming from so we've got 3.3 volts we've got 5 volts so we've got three grounds and then we've got our 12 volts uh, and if we follow the 12 volts along uh, we come to our transistor just here and you can clearly see Looking at the symbol, it's an MPN transistor. Uh, and this is the actual resistor that we remove as well. Um, but as you can see, it's a 2SD1856 transistor. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get the data sheet and prove to you this is a transistor and not a voltage regulator, as everybody says. <laughs> So what I've gone and done is I've gone and got the data sheet for the power transistor and here it is. It's the 2SD1856 and as we can clearly see it is a medium power transistor and it's used for driving motors, relays and solenoids. Uh, and that makes perfect sense because obviously in the Dreamcast we've got the spindle motor that spins the disc and we've got the sled motor that moves the optical pickup laser up and down its rails to seek the disc uh, and this is what powers that this uh, medium power transistor so uh, I wasn't going to say this guys but I'm going to say it all those people that have made blog posts all those people that have made YouTube videos where they've turned around and said remove the 12 volt voltage regulator every single one of those people are wrong because it's not a voltage regulator it's not even close to being a voltage regulator. It's never going to be a voltage regulator. It's a medium power transistor. Now I've proven to you that this is indeed an MPM power transistor. And as you can see, I've just moved it to the side. What I'm going to do is get this power board back in the Dreamcast and we'll see what the problem is. Power board's been modded, disabled the power transistor just here, you can see that. Let's power on the Dreamcast and see what we get. And we're getting a very, very faint image, you can just see that. That's some of the Luma signal being coupled into the composite sink. But as you can see, uh, we've got a black screen. Um, so I'm going to power off a Dreamcast uh, and boot it again and show you that. Hopefully you can see that Luma signal being coupled into the composite sink. And we're getting a very, very faint image. 
but yeah we've got a black screen so you may be asking yourself why is that well what I'm going to do now is I'm going to explain why so what I want to do now is explain why we're getting a black image when it comes to our Dreamcast now we've disabled the 12 watts uh, well if we take a look at the SCART first uh, there are a number of pins that we need uh, for to, to get an image obviously there's RGB which are here and the sync but we also need to tell the TV what to do with that signal and that we use pin 8 and 16 to do that now if you look at pin 8 this is the switching signal now depending on what voltage we send to this pin depends on what the TV does right so if we send anything between 0 and 2 volts the TV does nothing it stays on whatever channel it is if we send 5 volts to 8 volts the TV will switch over to the SCART input and it will set the aspect ratio to 16 by 9 now if we send 9.5 to 12 volts it will do the same it will switch over to the SCART input but it will set the aspect ratio to 4x3 and that's what the Dreamcast is it's a 4x3 aspect ratio console but we also need to tell the TV to switch into RGB mode and we do that on pin 16 so if we take a look at the voltages on pin 16 anything from 0 to 0.4 volts it will be composite video or S video um, anything between 1 volt and 3 volt it switches to RGB now if we take a look at the output the video output of the Dreamcast here's our output connector we can see here's pin 4 it's 12 volts here it is we follow it down and this is what sets our video mode so we've got 12 volts here so this is going to switch over to the AV channel and it's going to set the aspect ratio to 4x3 which is what the Dreamcast is it's a 4x3 console now what it's also going to do is internally inside the TV there is a 75 ohm resistor and in conjunction with this resistor we create a voltage divider and what that will do is it will take this 12 volts and attenuate it down to a level pin 16 is expecting in our case with a 75 ohm resistor and a 560 ohm resistor we'll get down to 1.4 volts which is in between what our RGB is needed so that's basically told the TV to switch over to the AV switch the 4x3 aspect ratio and set the TV to RGB mode now what we've done is we've disabled the 12 volts so our TV is not getting any of this switching or blanking signals therefore the TV doesn't even know it's RGB so we basically disabled our SCART coming out the back of the Dreamcast because we've disabled the 12 volts now that's a pretty stupid thing to do right um, now I can tell you a lot of Dreamcast SCART leads are actually wired this way so if you do disable your 12 volts you may find you knacker your SCART lead up as well and that's why I don't disable the 12 volts because you don't need to give yourself an headache because if I ever want to sell this on to someone else I can easily sell the console on its own they go and get a SCART lead guess what it's wide for 12 volts and they ain't getting a picture and then that's going to come back to me um, so yeah that's that's the reason why I don't disable the 12 volts because it, it, it interferes with all this blanking and switching signal uh, and you need that when you're when you're outputting RGB over SCART
So now you know why I don't disable the 12 volts uh, and I had a, a dummy load. And now what I've done is I've soldered back in the power transistor uh, and that little resistor underneath and it's power on and we should have our image back and there it is and there's our GD menu so yeah what I'm going to do now uh, is get the lid back on this thing and I can wrap up the video And as you can see, Dreamcast is all back together. Now those three resistors in parallel, um, they're gonna keep that power transistor in check. All you need is three one kilo ohm resistors, put them in parallel. Um, you wire them in to the 12 volt rail, you put them near the fan, and that allows the fan to pour cool air over the top of them, uh, and then they'll be perfectly fine and they'll keep that uh, power transistor from going thermonuclear <laughs> so anyway we're all back together let's power on and we should get a boot now and we do and there's our GD menu so yeah there you go guys, so just a quick video showing you why I create a dummy load for the 12 volts and not remove the actual NPM power transistor. So yeah, if you like the video guys, please give it a big thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe, all the usual stuff. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one. And it's an NPM power transistor. <laughs> Not a voltage regulator. <laughs> Catch you next time, guys.